I'll start off and I'll just say today is June 29th, 2012, and we are here with Marlene Baumhover in Cedar Falls, Iowa, and I am Jean Richardson. Marlene, you have some pictures in your scrapbooks you want to share with us first? Well, yes, I do, and uh, I found this page. Now that's actually, uh, this is my teacher. Her name was Dorothy Wollenberg. That's me. And I, this is um, Larry Armstrong. This is my brother. This is Mavis Armstrong. And that's Carl Peters. And this was another Armstrong girl, but I can't remember her name. But you can see that this is the teacher's car. She drove and parked it right by the schoolhouse. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, the way that she got to school. I can remember my mother saying that when she went to a country school, her teacher drove a horse and buggy, and she got to, if she was dilly-dallying along the way, the teacher would come along and she would get to ride with her. <laughs> but anyway, this, uh, this quiz kid, Marlene Kennett, uh, that was a Carroll County uh, quiz derby entry for the state fair, and I was on that team. And uh, I... Uh, this was another article that was in about the Quiz Derby entrance for the county is named. And along with me was uh, Ruth Schmidt of Manning and myself and then uh, uh, Donnie Harriet of Lake City. We were the three that were on the Carroll County Quiz Team. We got to go to the State Fair and I don't remember if I made it through the the. How, how many rounds I went through, but I think I went down the third or fourth round. and But it was a, a wonderful experience. I had never even been to the State Fair before, so that was a, a new experience for me. So these were the items from this. And then I have, I have report cards. Um, and I don't know if this was, let's see, this would have been eighth grade. Uh, in 1947, and her, Dorothy Wollenberg, and Mary Moore was our county superintendent. And so, uh, and my mother, of course, signed it. And um, my grades. Now, I was looking at these, and <laughs> I got such a kick out of I never liked ma math. Typical girl. I didn't <laughs> think I could do math, but... Everything else was pretty good, it, and you can see that we had, uh, um, well, phonics, and she's written science in there, and reading, spelling, writing, arithmetic, geography, grammar, history, and music, and uh, phys ed. We didn't have any that I recall. We just went outside and played, but we did have hygiene, and civics, and et cetera, word study skills. But, uh, and I guess I, I was okay in all these areas. <laughs> but this would have been my eighth grade report card. And then this one, this is kind of in backward order, this was seventh grade. And as you can see on here, this was Sheridan number seven, but it was called Buck Run number seven. It was in Sheridan Township. And the schoolhouse was on the corner. It was a half mile away, and I walked to school. And the property that the schoolhouse was on, eventually my father bought that farmland. and the He bought it after the schoolhouse had been torn down. But um, uh, for a while, then I owned it. And uh, But Buck Run number 7, that always stuck with me. That been in the 50s or the 60s when it was torn down? Probably in the uh, 60s. It would probably the early 60s. It might have been gone. And one again, of the last to close, maybe. It could could be, yeah, probably. And in this one, I got a D in arithmetic at oh. <laughs> <in> 85. <laughs> but uh, uh, math was always something that I uh, current events and art and. I think about her, all the grade levels that she taught, and how meticulous. Look at her, her writing. She was a typical um, 
school teacher. She lived with her mother in Carroll and drove back and forth, which was about 10 miles each day. And um, she was, I always felt like she had a, a special interest in me, and I don't know if she did or not, but you know, you like to think you're <laughs> she special you feel that to, way. <laughs> to the teacher. Yes. Um, let's see, this was eighth grade. I went into um, country school, as we called it, when, you know, farmers moved the 1st of March, and my parents made a move the 1st of March, and I had to go to a country school. I came from a Scranton Consolidated School, so which was a big, to me, a huge building, and, and it isn't really, I look at it now, that had 1st through 12th. And so when I, going from that to a country school was a real change for me. And what grade was that? Sixth grade. Okay. I was in sixth grade. So I finished out the year, sixth grade year, and then seventh and eighth grade in the country school. But it was a, I look back now and it was, it was a charming experience. It really was. Um, it just uh, gave you a, a perspective that I wouldn't have had otherwise and some opportunities too because there weren't very many of us. How many? Uh, well, in my when I graduated, I don't know how many were in that class, but there were, um, oh, well, looks like there was quite a group. Now, is that the whole county though, maybe? Yeah, the whole county. This was Carroll County, and these were all the graduates. So there was quite a group of us, so you know that the Country schools in Carroll County were going going strong to have that many. But this was my eighth grade graduation. They called it rural graduation for Carroll County, and it was at Cedar um, Cedar Falls Carroll High School Auditorium. So it was pretty big time. We thought. <laughs> and um, so it was oh it was Carroll, not that I'm thinking of this little Sheraton building, but it's no not. <laughs> no it was that was part of Carroll County. And I, um, I, I did two, uh, two song. I sang two solos for our graduation, and uh, Slumber Song and Pippa Song. I don't remember those songs, but I sang them. <laughs> and some of the other uh, students that could uh, had some uh, musical training did that. Performed also, but and the teachers, and this was mine, Dorothy Wollenberg. So this would um, be the number of country schools you had in the county, there, if these are the teachers, yes, or at least okay. those with eighth yes. graders that year. You're right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 schools. It's a lot of schools for one little county, isn't mm -hmm. it? And this was in... Uh, 1948 at that time, so they were still going strong. And I remember her, she was a very lovely lady, and I was kind of in awe of her because she was the county superintendent. Would you have known her before you started country school? No, no. And I thought it was interesting that there was, at that time, that there was a female county, as I look back, a female county superintendent because a superintendent of schools at that time was a man. That was you know, in, in, the, in the consolidated schools. But that was kind of interesting to find that. And this was um, in the, the paper uh, after our graduation. And Carolyn Bolger beat me out as the top Oh. student by she had I'll, I'll, she had um, an average of 94 to lead the 42 eighth grade pupils and I had a 93 and the next gal had 92 and Ruth Schmidt so he said there were 42 students and how many rural schools did we say were 19. 19 19 so about two a little more than two per school mm -hmm. Do you remember how many were in your class, in your school? In, there was another boy, okay. Harry, uh, Harry Armstrong was his name. Okay. And so 
he had sisters there too. And I found some, um, oh, this was my eighth grade examination record card. And so these were the areas that we were uh, tested on, the reading and writing and orth orthography, arithmetic, geography, grammar, history, music, health, civics, and science. And then this was an additional uh, in music and health. So, and signed by Mary L. Moore. Our address was Glidden, Iowa. And our phone at that time, which was a party line, was through Litterdale, Iowa. And then I had to go to high school in Carroll, Iowa. So we were kind of out about 10 miles from every place. And, so you didn't really know where you were from, uh, did you? <laughs> so this was, uh, these were interesting. And I also found some of the questions, I, which I thought were... Uh, from the eighth grade exam? Yes. This was the list of spelling words, evidently, that we had to um, be able to spell. There were 50 words. Were those ones maybe that you had to practice? Um, that been a practice I'm sure test? that we did. I can remember that. Uh, Miss, Miss Wollenberg really drilled us in spelling. We had list upon list that we worked on. And then this was the history. And we evidently it said answer five of the questions, so we could mm. choose the five. And I assume that these little pencil marks are what I was doing, um, what work was accomplished by each of any five of the following. So obviously I chose Charles Lindbergh and uh, Zeblin Pike, and plus three more. But I thought these were... Very interesting. Name four prominent explorers and state what nation each represented and state which regions each explored. And name six nations that took part in World War. Name four important leaders and give the date of the armistice. I mean, we were drilled. Uh, really <laughs> drilled. We had to know this stuff. Name three great American inventions and how have these inventions aided in the development of our country. And we were timed on this test. I do remember that. We had, I don't know, remember how many hours, but I know we, everybody start and you'd work through one section and then stop and then start. And, and they monitored us very carefully. They really did walk up and down the aisles mm -hmm. <laughs> looking over our shoulders. <laughs> so that was that part. And all this one arithmetic. I, I got I as I read through these, I had to chuckle. It said you answer ten questions. And you can see I have read through and checked <laughs> and probably gone back and checked. But um, to see which I can what I would do. Helen's marks in arithmetic for five days and it gave the ninety four, etc. What was her average mark? And the man had a bank balance of so much at the beginning of last month. He has since given checks and then the amounts. He also made a deposit of 35. What is his balance now? So a man was employed to collect $1,250 in debts at a commission of 5%. How much did he receive if he collected 85% of the debts? Mm -hmm. So they were... They were interesting. They did, um, up here I thought also this, you know, a fourth of a bushel, how many pecks is that? Mm. Three-eighths of a gallon, how many quarts? A third of a foot. So we really were expected to know those things. One gross, how many things is that? And one cubic foot is how many cubic inches? inches. And just the, the, the uh, stories themselves, the pro story problems. Mary's making a linen dresser cover, 33 inches by 17 and a half inches. How much lace must she buy 
to put lace all around the edge, allowing two and a half inches extra at each corner for turning. Find the cost at 25 cents a yard. You know, today that would not be a story problem that would, <laughs> would work for students. They, they couldn't relate to that at all. And Just any. Mr. Jones borrowed $5,000 on January 2nd, 1926 at 6%. He repaid all the money plus the interest on March 17th, 1926. What was the total amount he paid? Um, and Mr. Johnson bought a tractor and, and some, another problem involved a farmer using his tractor for 696 hours for all kinds of work. And so this was, and also here's one we had to find the volume of a, of the silage in a silo, and so <laughs> you, you could tell it was typical uh, rural appropriate mm -hmm. story problems. But I'm sure this was really something that I had to struggle with and think very hard, and I probably had pencil marks all over the paper. No use of calculators because they didn't even have them back then. And the written reading, you had to um, evidently, yeah, the poem down here. In each of the stands of the poem given below, what are the things for which America is said to be beautiful? So it was comprehension here. Then you had to know. Um, answer by true or false. Hiawatha was written by Tennyson. True or false. In reading silently, the lips and tongue should move. And Evangeline was written by Longfellow. And Snowbound was written by Whittier. And I read orally for personal information. Um, so it was that kind of testing. And then you, know, you had to, uh, it says oral reading, so Read the, read the above poem orally to the conductor of the examinations. So we did have to go up. That was part of the eighth grade examination, go up and read aloud. How long, do you remember how long you were there? Was this a morning? Was this a whole day? It, uh, I don't remember exactly other than it seems to me we were there all morning. I just imagine, we had to go to the courthouse in Carroll County to take this, and the exam was given there. So, but I'm, you know, I remember the timing of it, and each uh, division of it was, was set up. So maybe it was an entire day. I cannot see how we could have done all of that with that many students in, in, in uh, just a half a day. So it could have been. A day, but it was a it was a big deal. I do remember that. Talk about stress and and you know being prepared. But like I say, Miss Wollenberg drilled us and drilled us. And I'm sure she had uh, a background. You know, knew what she was preparing us for. What she knew we would have to endure. And the music questions, write five kinds of notes and their corresponding rests. And you had to define sharp, flat, and treble clef, and you had to know those things. You had to name two patriotic songs, two hymns, and two one folk song. And, you know, hymns would certainly not be something that would be uh, appropriate today. That those would not be sung, even. And you had to write the first stanza of America. And in what ways does the Victrola help in learning music? We did have a Victrola in the, but it was okay. one that you wound up, had to crank up. And then uh, hygiene. <laughs> name five health habits you should observe. Uh, they also ask you to name two evil effects of, of cigarettes plus alcohol, but um, I, I, I don't remember, because at that time people didn't know about the really serious health hazards for cigarettes. And my father was a smoker. He smoked Lucky Strikes. 
suppose maybe it was more like fire hazards or I don't know maybe bad breath or something like mm -hmm. that I don't know and three things you sh would do to prevent eye strain and that what should you do to prevent tuberculosis what did you do to prevent tuberculosis I don't recall I'm sure that it was probably had to do with hand washing and being you know not taking very good care of yourself uh, why is it important to get rid of body wastes and then there's uh, uh, a, a matching situation down here you have to match t tea and coffee uh, harmful for children that would be the match for that and uh, the windpipe the trachea but um, very basic hygiene and yet detailed. Mm -hmm. I remember too, because I thought this was interesting, that you should always hang your pajamas up uh, when you got out of them in the morning. Hang them up so they could air out, not put them under your pillow. I remember being taught that. Perhaps they weren't washed very often too. <laughs> Probably once a week, you oh, know. Okay. I'm sure that because mother always did the laundry, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, she had a, a electric washing machine when they got a, electricity, not on this farm, but in the prior okay. farm, there had not been electricity at first, and then when it came in, she did get an electric washing machine, so, but I, I enjoyed going back and thinking about these things when I ran across <laughs> them and found them. And this is my eighth grade, my Carroll County Schools, my diploma. Look at the lovely penmanship that Dorothy had. And then the superintendent. And then I looked at this and this handwriting, I thought maybe the M's matched, so I wonder if... Mary Moore wrote our names in. That is lovely penmanship. And certainly something that is not, uh, oh, I can remember we, we did the, the Palmer method and, you know, over and over and over again. This was the Great Seal of Iowa. But anyhow. That was something else that I had. And let's see, there must be something in here that I've got the page marked. Oh, here we are. This picture was in the paper, the Carroll paper, and there we are actually taking the eighth grade exam. Is And that's you? Mm-hmm, that's me. And I think Mother went to the uh, Carroll Daily Times Herald and bought this picture. And then this was the certificate, again, signed by Mary Moore, that uh, admitted me to high school that I took when, when I went in to, um, when I went in to register. This is another, this is grade six, so this would have been when I finished up. See, it started out Scranton Grade School, Pupils Report, and then... And I assume that I had to turn this over when I went. Then the teacher has written in Sheridan Buckrun oh. 7 for this okay. last column. We also had, looks like, the, the weekly reader. Mm -hmm. And a grade for that, too. Mm -hmm. Church school, now that was at Scranton Consolidated. I've thought about that one. This was a consolidated school, and we were dismissed at 9 o'clock on Friday mornings, every Friday morning, to go to our church for Bible study. Oh, my. And no adult walked us. The Methodist church was just across the street from the school, so we just simply ran across. Christian church was a block away, and the Catholic church was probably three blocks away. The children would just go on their own. 
Think how things have and changed. Everybody went to one mm -hmm. church or another. Mm -hmm. So this was the sixth grade report card. But I did find this. Yeah, that's okay. uh, struggling away probably with math. <laughs> All right. Oh, we need to um, put this on our. We didn't have that um, recorded. Now these were some art projects that I dearly loved, and oh my, I thought this was so wonderful. I really enjoyed doing this. Uh, I had to make a template and uh, brought the, t the tea towel. I'm sure it was a, a feed sack of some kind. It's kind of a coarse uh, fabric, but uh, and I remember her, Miss Wollenberg, showing me how to, to shade, just brush in lightly and to use the different shades of green and uh, then working on that and then we'd press it. And I can't remember if we used a cloth dipped in vinegar or something and then we pressed it there uh, to set the fabric, to set the colors and stuff. And even my children uh, know about this because they have used it to dry dishes. <laughs> and this was a little skater, a little apple skater. And I remember doing the eye, eyebrows and, and uh, thought that was so charming. But Miss Wollenberg did a lot of things like this for me. And I don't remember, maybe the other girls also did it, but the boys didn't. They did other things. So she, tr she really did try to, to uh, meet all of our needs. Uh, but I still have these. I love them. <laughs> but yes, they have been used. They've got some stains on them. But I hate to bleach them because I'm afraid that the colors might come out. Oh, so they've never been bleached. <laughs> One other thing that she also had us do that I remember so completely is uh, in geography we studied South America and we had these big sheets of I assume like a poster board or something and the outline of the South America and then the countries were in that and then we had to put in things like rivers and the capitals and major cities, the mountains, all the physical aspects of the country. And then we had to make little symbols and then the, the, have a key at the bottom. And I loved doing that. And I can still remember Bolivia had tin. And I worked and worked to draw a little tin can and put it in there. But, you know, that made me, when I was a teacher, realize how much that kind of a project helped you retain the information and at the same time it was you could use your creativity and you you still were you had to do your own research make sure you got everything labeled correctly and and you got to keep this huge picture of South America and I, I just bet that that was a country we studied for maybe a half a year or something, one year semester. But I can visualize that map yet. That was just a, oh, I loved doing that kind of thing. So. Okay, I think we'll start on the questions. And I just noticed your plate holder here. Yes. I wonder if we put it here, if it might be high enough. Okay. Take some of the plates up down here. Kind of heavy otherwise. Maybe I'll take off. These are pewter, so maybe I'll take off. So they're very heavy. I'll leave one on the top layer because that might, uh, that will probably be the height that you would like. This is that uh, Roman. Armatel, you know, that's what do you think? I think put it here. I think it's oh, I think 
it's going to be perfect. I'm going to have you sit down again. Okay. I might put just a... Turn it off. You need a book? There's glasses in there. Maybe a book. Well, this was good, wasn't it? Oh, Bud's reading it. I haven't read it. It's very good, and it's very easy to read. I think. That should do it. You sure? <laughs> you need anything else? What years did you attend country school? Well, let's see, my eighth grade graduation was in 1948 that spring, so 47 would have been seventh grade, so 1946 I would have started. That was, the, I finished out the sixth grade and then the seventh grade and the eighth grade. And you said you lived a half a mile away? Yes. Do you remember any task that you had to do before you went to school? Well, my parents did not have, or mother did not have a gas stove until I probably started high school. So there was a cook stove. So I had to gather, or go out and there was a, a cob shed and I had to make sure there was a basket of cobs in. That was my job. She burnt corn cobs in the stove, the cook stove. She could bake wonderful ancient food cakes and I never could figure out because that stove, you know, you, you had, there was no way to regulate the fire. Also, I had to gather eggs and I disliked that task because the hens would uh, peck me if I wasn't fast enough because you'd slide your hand underneath. My dad could do that and they would never bother him. He was kind of a gentle soul. I think they knew that they, that they had me buffaloed and so I at times would even reach in and grab them and throw them off and then get the eggs, but those two things had to be done. Do you remember what clothes you would have worn? Well, um, you know, cotton dresses, uh, warm dresses most of the time, or skirts. and a Even in a cold, cold winter? Well, you wore slacks then, heavy slacks. I don't, I didn't have snow pants at that point in my life. I probably felt I was too old for that. And boots of some kind. But, uh, The rubber boots, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Red rubber boots? No, they weren't oh. red. They probably would have been black. Very plain. And how did the clothing change in the winter? Well, of course, you had a, uh, you would wear, you know, jacket and mittens. I always had mittens. I don't remember having gloves. And uh, scarves, a scarf rather than a stocking cap. Wore scarves. Do you remember what time you would have left for school? Well, probably, uh, I'm sure the school day started at 9. It was a traditional. And so probably uh, 8.30 would have started walking or before. You'd get out to the end of the lane and then you'd think of something that you had to go back and get. And I had a kid brother. He was in the second grade when I was in the sixth grade. And as a typical little brother, he was always tormenting me. So I would try to uh, send him on his way and then I'd go tag him along or I'd try to get out and get ahead of him. <laughs> <laughs> and we carried a, our lunch in a, a black, very functional lunch box. There wasn't anything fancy. Do you remember anything else along the way besides a tormenting brother? <laughs> well, it was a gravel road and I can remember the dust and your shoes would be quite dusty by the time you got to school. It was a half mile. And there was another farm on the opposite side of the road, about a quarter of the way there. And those children went to a Lutheran school, a parochial school. So they, 
they were taken into town. It was a primarily a Lutheran and Catholic community. We were probably the only Methodists uh, in that area. So that family was Lutheran, and then north of us lived a Catholic family, and they had a Catholic grade school in Litterdale also, so those children went to that school. But I remember the dust, as I would just, you know, you'd kick that up as you walked along the gravel road. And uh, the ditches, uh, the ditch around the um, schoolhouse would, in the spring and summer, would be filled with the daylilies. I always thought that was interesting. I wondered if somebody had planted those at one time or if they, how they came to be in the ditch. You'd, they were just beautiful, orange, the orange daylilies. But they were, they were in the ditch, they weren't around the schoolhouse. And there was a gravel entrance from the road into the schoolyard, but it was very short. And so Miss Woolenberg would just drive in there and park her car right up next to the schoolhouse. Let's talk about the, the schoolyard and the playground. It was just very plain. Uh, I don't remember, well, there wasn't any play equipment per se, as you would expect uh, or find on a, a, another uh, town schoolyard. Um, it seemed to me that we did have a pole of some kind with the ball on it, and we would bat that around a lot. But we played uh, like tag and um, Annie Annie over. Um, played ball. We'd have a bat and a ball. Did that kind of thing. There weren't very many of us, so we, we just took turns. You know, I can remember if you hit the ball while well, you got to run around a little bit. And, and uh, because we didn't have enough of an enrollment to have teams or anything like that. Do you remember how many there were? Uh, my brother and myself, uh, and two of the Peters, two Peters boys, and there were three Armstrong children, so that would be seven. You didn't have a baseball team. No. <laughs> so what did you do once you arrived at school? Well, I'm sure we went right in. We might have, you know, stood around outside and talked or... Uh, run around. Um, I do remember that my brother had a kind of a football helmet and he took that a couple of times in a football. If they brought things like that from home, they played them with that during uh, recess and uh, at lunchtime. And I'm sure I probably, if, if Miss Willenberg was there, I probably went in. And if she would, she would let me help her, I would. I liked doing that kind of thing. We did not have a piano in the schoolhouse, but we did have a Victrola, and it was a one you had to crank. What did you do then first upon entering the schoolhouse? You would have helped Mrs. Miss Willenberg. Willenberg, Dorothy Willenberg. Uh, well, and we had, uh, you know, a traditional beginning to the day, I mean, with the Pledge of Allegiance and singing, not always maybe the Star Spangled Banner, but America the Beautiful probably, because it would have had to have been a cappella, and probably that was a little bit, but there was, remember saying the Pledge and the singing a song, and then we would... And I'm sure she didn't have to take roll call because she could just look and see who was there and who wasn't. Um, and then the, the uh, schedule for the day would begin. And it would be an assortment. I'm sure that there was something each day that was uh, standard, but she would work with the younger children, get us the older students started, and then work with the younger children. And we sometimes would help, like, it, my brother did not like it if I got to help him with his, any of his work. That didn't thrill him. So I usually worked with the other little boy. His name was Carl Peters. 
Um, and they, uh, but you, you know, you were, you worked pretty independently. You were an independent learner, or you were taught to be an independent learner. You were encouraged to do that, to take your assignment, get busy, and, and do it on your own, and work at your speed. Um, I don't remember doing a project with the other uh, student in my grade. Harry was his name. We worked pretty independently. You said you had a Victrola, no mm -hmm. piano. What else was in your schoolroom? Uh, there was, uh, at that time, there was a, a stove that was a fuel oil. There was a barrel outside. So there wasn't any, uh, you know, cook or like a, a pot bellied stove in the middle of the room or anything like that. So Miss Woolenberg did not have to have wood or, or, you know, coal or anything like that brought into the building. So there wasn't any. Uh, work done with that. Um, so it kept the schoolroom, it would run during the night and so you'd go in and it wouldn't be freezing. And as a typical school you would go in and there was an outer, little outer room and you'd hang your coats up on a peg and put your lunch box there and, and uh, there was some kind of a water cooler for our water. We did not have paper cups. I remember we had, you know, we each had a cup there that was for us, and with so, such few students, you could you could know which one was yours easily enough. Anything else you can think of that was in your classroom, in your school? Oh, the pictures on the wall. Of course, there was the traditional picture of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. A flag was up. Uh, also, there were the um, uh, models of handwriting. They were posted around the room. There was a blackboard and chalk and we'd get to work at the blackboard and that was a great deal of fun. The teacher's desk was in the front. There were bookshelves with books on them. I love to read. Oh, I, reading was my passion and uh, my mother, and I'm sure that it was, or I should say my parents, I'm sure it was a, a financial thing for them because they didn't have a lot of much money at all. But uh, she uh, joined the Junior Literary Guild of America for me, so I got a book every month. And of course, the, uh, the selections always included the Newberry books. And so I had those, and art books. I do remember the, because it was kind of lonesome for me. I had no girlfriends, you know, uh, after we moved. And, but I do remember two art books that came, and I loved those. I poured over those books. But I loved the, getting a book every month. And we never sent any back. I kept them all. <laughs> but there were also books there. And some of them, they would be rotated. Uh, they would come, Miss Woolenberg would bring out uh, books from, uh, I'm not sure if they were from the, uh, the Carroll Library or if they were from a library that the county had and, they, and the books rotated amongst the schools. But I read just about everything I could get my hands on. Now, there's seven students in this school. Were there a lot of empty desks? Were there desks that would have been nailed to the floor? Um, there might have been some. I really don't remember. I do remember that my desk was, you know, the kind you would slide in and the, the top lifted up and you had your stuff down in there. But I don't remember it being attached to any desk right next to me. They were in rows. The younger children always sat in the front, and Harry and I would sit or in the back as the older students.
What kind of items, supplies did your family have to supply? Well, paper, pencils, erasers, um, an ink pen with ink. Fountain. Fountain pen, yes. No such thing as ballpoint pen then. Um, and I don't know if they had to pay a fee for art supplies like construction paper or paper that we might have used in projects or if that was part of the um, uh, county that supplied those items. They just each, you know, each school had a budget and they could take so much out. And where would your parents have purchased the paper and pencil? In Carroll, in Carroll, Iowa. At the Ben Franklin store. Okay. Let's talk about how the teacher organized the school day's lessons. You said she started with the younger ones. Or well, first she would have given you things to do. Yes. Uh, something like, um, uh, like a math assignment or handwriting that we could get busy on. Or, or maybe a geography lesson where we had to read some pages and then when she got to us we would talk about them or answer questions. And those usually had, after a reading assignment in all the subjects, there would be questions at the end of a reading assignment. And we would sometimes write out those answers and have that, have to hand those in. And of course there was the dreaded math assignments. <laughs> that I would do dutifully. And you had to be neat. Miss Wollenberg de demanded neatness. And your name had to be written out, even though, of course, she knew <laughs> that I was Marlene. And but you had to put your last name, too? Yes. Kittrell, did I say? Kennett. 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 K-E-N-N-E-T-T. the experiences differ between the upper grades and the lower grades? Mm, well, I know, like I said, we did a, a independent work. You know, by that age you're an, an independent, more of an independent learner. And I liked that. Um, and I guess I liked pleasing the teacher too. You know, I was one of those students who was a teacher pleaser. I wanted to do the right thing. And um, I think the younger children, there was probably more interaction. I can remember her, you know, sitting with them and reading up front. And, and uh, she drilled us, but we had a lot of memorization to do. It was, it was rote learning at many points. And I, I do remember her leaning over my shoulder and helping me with math. <laughs> now, Marlene, this is the way. This is what you do. <laughs> she was a very patient, very soft-spoken person. Do you have any idea how old she would have been? Uh, not well. I'm sure she was probably in her late 40s, early 50s. Uh, I know it was a number of years later that uh, it was after I was married, and she when she passed away, my mother told me that you know Miss Wollenberg had died. Her obituary was in the paper, and she had never married. Um, but you know, to any student, your teacher's old, whether they're 25 or they're 55, they're old. <laughs> well, now, you mentioned the activity about doing the map of Bolivia. Yes. Do you remember any other special activities? Um, well, the art project, I remember that. And we didn't have things like construction paper at home. And so anytime we would have a an art activity or a social or geography activity, 
or history that would involve making things with out of construction paper or con or making a booklet. We made some booklets, I remember that. And you get to have construction paper for your cover. And that, oh, I loved that. <laughs> and to, you know, make your cover, the, the creativity that was um, encouraged was something that I, I did enjoy. We had an, an, a set of encyclopedias too in the, in, the, in the room. And so we could use that for research. And that was probably the main source when we did research that we would go to the encyclopedia and the dictionary. Of course, there was a dictionary. Encouraged to use those things. And again, those were independent activities. And I always prided myself on There was competitiveness in my <laughs> life. I always wanted to do better than uh, Harry did. <laughs> Was he a good student? Well, in my estimation, no. <laughs> I, you know, typical girl, you wanted to be the best, be the, succeed. And education was valued by my parents. When we had lived at Scranton, my father had been on the Scranton School Board. And he had gone to, of course, to a, a country school in Montana, and he had an eighth grade education. So he valued education, and we were taught that uh, that was very important. If you had any homework, you, you better, darn well, better do it. And uh, of course, you had chores when you got home from school to do, and that was first. And then, you know, you did that after supper. Chores first and then homework. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what was your least favorite subject. What would you say was your favorite subject? Reading, anything to do with reading, and therefore I enjoyed geography, which was social studies, but the history uh, and the health, anything that involved reading, I enjoyed. How much did you interact with the with Harry during your lessons? Oh, I'm sure there was some interaction, but you know, um, sixth grade girls and and seventh and eighth grade, you get. Uh, you, you think of boys <laughs> as jerks at first, <laughs> you know, something just to be tolerated. And then as you get older, then the hormones kick in, and you think, oh, is this all there is? <laughs> just one other, you know, and I, there weren't any, this, I remember his sister, she was in the fourth grade uh, when we were in the sixth, and so Mavis was probably the one that I would play with outside. She and I would you know, play house and that kind of thing outside. I remember that. Did that, you mentioned helping the teacher in the morning. Did the teacher have any other helpers at all besides the students? No, no, there were no other adults or people coming in. What rules do you remember your classroom having? Well, you had to be busy. You had to be actively engaged and no whispering, no talking. Stay in your seat. What discipline techniques did your teacher use to reinforce these rules? Well, I didn't experience any <laughs> of those things. I always, as I said, I was a teacher pleaser, a people pleaser too. Uh, and I, I wanted to do the right thing. So the, I didn't experience those. My brother was a great giggler, oh my, when he was in the second and third grade. And he would be encouraged to um, step out into the cloakroom and then come back in when he... And I think that was probably... Uh, you were asked to go out and sit in the cloakroom if you were not acting appropriately. 
I don't ever remember her spanking anyone. That may have happened because it was permissible at that time, but I do not remember her doing that, and I'm, I'm sure I would have. That would have made a great impression upon me. What was the procedure for using the outhouse? You had to raise your hand, and with such few students, it was, you know, she would just, she knew what we wanted. We did not have a hand signal. Um, so we would have to excuse ourselves and go out to the, to the outhouse. What did you do to get her attention if you needed help with anything? Probably wait, raise your hand, or if she was in the front of the room, you would walk up there and you would wait quietly. You would not interrupt. You would wait until she was finished with whatever she was doing, and then. But she always gave you your, her attention right away. You know, she would look up, and then you you knew that was it was appropriate to ask a question at that time. How did you know it was time for lunch? Uh, she would. Uh, in, you know, there was a clock in the room, but she would also say that it was lunchtime and, and we had to go out and uh, wash our hands. And there was just a tin basin with a bar of soap, you know, and a towel, a community towel. You look back, that wasn't very hygienically correct, but... Um, and uh, get your lunch bucket and come in and sit down and eat your lunch. On, in the spring, when it was really nice, we could go outside and eat, sit on the ground. Didn't have a picnic table, it was just, you'd just go out and sit on the ground. And there was a wooden, it, there weren't steps, but there was a wooden platform that was just a little ways off the ground, and you stepped up on that, and, and it was a good sized platform. And then you would go in the door. So. I remember sitting out there on that platform. We'd kind of all sit around the edges of it and eat our lunch and went on nice days. Do you remember what would have been packed in this black lunch pail? Oh, probably cheese sandwich. Uh, once in a great while there would be uh, maybe a cold meat, but mostly it seemed like it was cheese or, or probably jelly of some kind because you had no refrigeration and so meat was not. And so a piece of, maybe a piece of fruit, probably an apple. And, and a cookie, there would be cookies, homemade cookies. How would you say your meals compared with other students? Probably were comparable. Uh, the uh, that farming community, they were uh, all of the children were the children of renters, so they their parents did not own farmland. So we were probably pretty much the same. Some of the. Uh, you know, we would the, go to the, our parents would help each other, and if it was thrashing or something like that, then mother would go and help with that. And uh, uh, she always prided herself at, at setting a good table and, and having dishes, plates that matched, and glasses for all the farmers. And sometimes they didn't have enough glasses when there was a big crew and so they would use mason fruit jars for water at the table uh, and mother was always um, that was not appropriate in her eyes but it had to be done and now they use they sell them with make them turn them into mugs or you you sell them and there's as a drinking uh, glass times change <laughs> How long was lunchtime? We had a traditional hour. You ate lunch, you went, you, you used the outhouse if you needed to, and we played out, and then school started again at one o'clock. And we were out at four. Okay. Do you remember any special routines at the end of the day? 
Uh, we had to make sure that our desktop was cleared, books and papers were put away, the, uh, any like a reading table, that had to be cleared. Everybody had to tidy up, uh, wastebasket emptied, the, the uh, chalkboard had to be erased, and I, I remember we were assigned on a rotating basis the different duties. Make sure everybody, if they wore a jacket or coat or whatever, if they wore any outer apparel at all, that had to go home. They weren't supposed to leave it in the, in the cloakroom. Did you ever see your teacher outside of school? Oh, once in a, um, once in a great while. Uh, we would run into her in Carroll at a grocery store or at J.C. Penney's <laughs> and oh that would thrill me <laughs> to see her outside of the school situation. Did anybody help the teacher take care of the schoolroom besides the students, the schoolhouse? Were there any chores that the parents would have helped with? Not that I recall, but it does seem at one, there was one year, of course with just two and a half years being there, uh, there was one spring that there was some painting to be done and the parents d were involved in that. I do remember that. Mother loved to paint, so I'm sure she was involved in that. Was there any kind of media at all? Any film strips? No. Nothing like that. We've already talked about your eighth grade exam and the graduation ceremonies and the ceremonies were held in the auditorium at Carroll you said? Yes, at Carroll High School. Do you remember what you wore? Yes I do. <laughs> I had a white dress and had little cap sleeves and kind of a mandarin collar and it was a linen texture type. It had a gold belt around here and then on the mandarin collar was some gold braid, embroidery type braid and mother had ordered it out of the catalog. And, uh, oh, I thought that was a pretty special dress. I do remember that. Do you remember what would have been the most meaningful part of the ceremony to you? Well, probably receiving the diploma, I'm sure. And, I, and, and Mary Moore, speaking, the superintendent, speaking to us. And then uh, I, I did a lot of, of singing. I, I enjoyed that. And doing participating in that way would have been a lovely experience. I'm sure I was shaking. My knees were shaking. But it would have been a, a great experience because those other students who had talent, like playing the piano or something else, they, uh, that got to perform. I considered that an honor to be asked to do that. And the music teacher at the high school, Carroll High School, accompanied me. And I was so glad to get to know her because she would be my music teacher that fall. Velma Radabaugh was her name. Velma? Velma Radabaugh. And she had very thick glasses, I remember that. And I thought, here she plays the piano, reads all this music, and she had these really round, thick glasses. She, I'm sure she had, uh, you know, some serious eye uh, corrections that needed to be taken care of. But that always intrigued me, her glasses. She was very quiet, too, but she was a very good music teacher, as I had her there when I was a freshman. How would she, you spell Radama? Radama, R-E-D-E. Oh, let's look at the, the print. 
program here. Let's get the name correct here. Um, R A D E B A U G H. D E B A U G H. Okay, thank you. What did you do after graduation? Probably we had ice cream. That was a treat to go have ice cream. And that's what we always did, so. To go to town and be in town and have ice cream in town. That was, <laughs> if we had ice cream on the farm, it was a homemade ice cream. So it was more of a treat to go into town? And, and have a you know, where you go in and would get a dish of ice cream or an ice cream cone. How did the town school compared to the country school. And uh, do you mean elementary grades? Yeah, let's talk about that since okay. you had both experiences. Uh, probably the uh, student population would be the major thing. And you know, you go from having uh, little girlfriends that you uh, would have overnights with and go home and play after school. And my dad would pick, come into town and pick me up. Or they would ride home on the bus and we'd play, and then after supper, that's what it was always called, uh, either her parents, their parents would come to get them or we'd take them back. And I had none of that. And I really missed that. I was, I think that's why mother uh, joined the book club, because books were my good friends at that time. And the participation, all of the, the activities, you know, there's always extra things going on. And that was, the early grades were uh, during the time of World War II, and I remember we built um, a little stand and we sold stamps. Uh, that, and that was in the third grade. That was a big deal. And then we'd paste them in our books to buy war bonds. And when I was in the fifth grade, uh, we did a, an all-school operetta, the elementary grades did. And it was a Christmas at Christmas time, and I was Mrs. Santa Claus. And my teacher was uh, Miss Blackburn. And I got to wear her high heels. Oh, I was so excited. <laughs> um, and so it was the activities and the participation and the opportunities that were uh, afforded you at, at a consolidated school that you didn't have in a, in a one room school. But there were pluses and minuses to both of them. You didn't have to go through any of the drama that young girls might, <laughs> in a group, <laughs> get involved in. You didn't have any of that. That would be a real plus. <laughs> but you missed him too. Yes. And mother would invite them and go down and get, pick them up because it was about 20 miles. And I remember one birthday she surprised me and had one special friend stay over. Picked her up and brought her. For a, a sleepover at the farm. It was a short time, but do you remember community politics affecting the operation of the school at all? Not really. And that, if there uh, was anything going on, I probably didn't pay any attention to it. And like I said, it was an important aspect of the cultural makeup of that community was the fact that we were a mile and a half from the little, ta little town of Litterdale. Litterdale had a Catholic school, a Lutheran school, and a public school. A mile and a half away, there were those three schools. So the Catholic school, of course, was run by their church and the Lutheran school, and then the, the public school there. Um, and that would have been, and literally it was a very small, small town. There might have been 200 residents or 150. Uh, so it was very, um, it was unique. The, I think the rural schools, 
I remember the county superintendent when she would come for a visit. Uh, that was a big deal. And I have no idea if Miss Willenberg knew that she was coming or not. But we, um, we were prepped. If Miss Moore comes, everybody tend to business, be on your best behavior. And I'm, uh, I know she visited the schools regularly. Do you know of any way the parents or community members were involved with this school? You talked about them helping to paint. Uh, not really. I'm, I would think that that would have come from the Carroll County uh, aspect of it. Their, their school board and, and Miss Moore, and I, I don't know if they had a school board or if there was just a uh, a group, a functioning group that directed the uh, country schools. Because most of the people see around there, they would have been involved in their parochial schools. As I said, we were probably the only uh, Methodists around, and it was a rarity. We moved there the 1st of March. And on this one mile stretch, there was a Lutheran family, then us, and then north of us lived the Catholic family. Party lines. And the preceding fall, my father had been hunting with a group of friends, and he had gone, to, um, up, gone out to a field to ask permission. He could see the farmer with his combine in the field. And he had walked to him to get permission, and as the closer he got, he realized that the farmer was had his arm in the picker. So Dad had to use a pocket knife and cut, the arm was just hanging there, and cut the remaining ligaments, tendons, and put a handkerchief around as a, as a tourniquet, and then carried him like you would carry a baby. And he had to walk to the farmhouse, and when he got there, they didn't have a phone. And then he had to go another half a mile to get help. And he saved this man's life. And uh, so uh, shortly after we moved to the farm, the 1st of March, Governor Blue was honoring the for valor several, uh, there were three or four. And party line, get the picture, <laughs> the sheriff calls. <laughs> um, Emery, I'll pick you up. <laughs> at such and such a time on, you know, like Saturday or whatever day. And he came out and picked it, but I'm sure we always laughed about that, that that was their, our, one of our first introductions to the, to the neighbors that <laughs> the sheriff was coming to pick us up <laughs> and take us to Des Moines. Okay, so after you left school, you went. You said you went home, and first it was chores. Mm -hmm. What chores did you do after school? Well, again, you had to feed chickens, and you had to make sure that the get the basket full of corn cobs again, and uh, eggs together again, because they didn't want them to be cracked or anything like that. And then uh, mother cleaned eggs, and I would help her with that. Uh, it seemed like it was a vinegar and water solution that we would wash the eggs with to make sure because there was sometimes there would be like chicken manure or something like that on it and of course to make them very clean and then she would sell the eggs the ones that we didn't use any other chores um, in the summertime uh, I would ha have to wash the separator but of course that I could I didn't do that during the school year because uh, that was something that she would take care of. And then after supper, you did homework. Mm -hmm. Did Never. you have what was a typical night's homework? Um, math, study spelling. Oh yes, study the spelling words, and um, sometimes there would be um, a project that I would work on. 